السلام علیکم رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ الحمد للہ رب العالمین ڈیئر ونڈرفل لسنرز میں اللہ سبحانہ و تعالیٰ کیپ یو آل سیف اینڈ گائیڈیڈ آلویز آمین میں اللہ سبحانہ تعالیٰ پروٹیکٹ ایوری ون اینڈ میک دس رمادان اے بلیسڈ منتھ فار ایوری ون مے وی آل اسٹرائیو اینڈ اسٹرگل ٹو بی بیٹر پیپل ان شاء اللہ آمین آل تھینکس اینڈ پریز از ڈیو ٹو اللہ وی سیک از ہیلپ اینڈ فرگیونس We seek refuge in Allah from the evil within ourselves and the consequences of our evil deeds. Whoever Allah guides will never be led astray, and whoever Allah leads astray will never find guidance. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah alone without any partners. I bear witness that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his servant and his messenger. Allah Almighty said, O you who have faith, Fear Allah as it is his right to be feared and do not die except as Muslims. Surah Al-Imran, Surah number 3, Ayat number 102. Verily, the most truthful speech is the book of Allah. The best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. And the worst of affairs are newly invented matters. Every newly invented matter is a religious innovation and every religious innovation is misguidance and every misguidance is hellfire. Alhamdulillah, we are in this beautiful month of Ramadan and everybody looks forward to, Alhamdulillah, um, gaining lots of reward, asking for forgiveness, asking Allah to erase our sins. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, We get up in the morning and then at iftari. Let's look at a beautiful hadith for iftari time for breaking our fast. Anas bin Malik narrated that Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Whoever has dried dates, then let him break the fast with that. And whoever does not, then let him break the fast with water. For indeed, water is purifying. This is recorded in Jami Tirmizi. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, water a gift from Allah, truly, truly. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa ahlul uqdatam min lisani yafkahu qawli. Alhamdulillah, we begin today the third juz of the Quran, Majeed, Alhamdulillah. It starts with the verse, the ayah 253. three uh, of, uh, of Surah Al-Baqarah and then continues to uh, verse nine, number 92 of Surah Ali Imran. Alhamdulillah, uh, most of this section was largely revealed in the early years after the migration to Medina as the Muslim community was set, setting up its first social and political center. Alhamdulillah, in Surah Al-Baqarah, uh, we have the most beautiful ayat, the Ayat of the Throne, Ayat al-Kursi, Alhamdulillah, let's look at that. Um, before we look at that, let's look at a hadith that uh, gives us the understanding of what Rasul Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about it. Ubay bin Kaab said, Allah's Messenger, may peace be upon him, said, O Abu Mundir, do you know the verse from the Book of Allah which according to you is the greatest? I said, Allah. And his apostle, may peace be upon him, know best. He said again, Abu Manzir, do you know the verse from the book of Allah, which according to you is the greatest? I said, Allah, there is no God but he, the living, the eternal. Thereupon he struck me on my breast and said, may knowledge be pleasant for you, O Abu Manzir. Alhamdulillah, this is recorded in Sahih Muslim. This is a proof that Ayat al-Kursi to be the most virtuous, greatest verse of the Qur'an Majeed. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Let's look at Ayat al-Kursi. Um, this is in Surah Baqarah, as we know. Uh, ayat number 255. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Allah, there is no God but Him, the living, the eternal. He neither slumbers nor sleeps. To Him belongs all that is in the heavens and the earth. Who can intercede with him without his permission? He knows what is before them and what is behind them. They cannot gain access to anything out of his knowledge except what he pleases. His throne is more vast than the heavens and the earth, and guarding of these both does not fatigue him. 
He is exalted and supreme. Allah Akbar. Let's look at another hadith. Sayyidna Abu Huraira, Razi Allah Ta'ala Anhu, reported that Allah's Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, Everything has a hump, and the hump of the Quran is Surah Al-Baqarah. There is a verse in it that is the chief of all verses of the Quran, the Aytul Kursi. This is recorded in Tirmidhi. Another hadith, it is reported by At-Tabrani that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the one who recites Aytul Kursi after the conclusion of the obligatory prayer, he is under the care of Allah until the next prayer commences. This is recorded in At-Tabrani. Alhamdulillah. So we are looking at this beautiful, uh, beautiful, beautiful Aytul Kursi. Beautiful ayat 255 of Surah Al-Baqarah. Alhamdulillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one and only Lord of all creations. The living, the self-subsisting, eternal means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is self-existing. Nothing created him and that he is ever living who can never die. Qayyum is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's beautiful attribute. Is that attribute Allah through which others exist. Allah makes other things exist. He's the richest of all and nothing can exist without his order or will. Then we see that no slumber can seize him nor sleep. No slumber can seize him nor sleep uh, means Allah could never be negligent, unaware or can, or can ever sleep because he doesn't require sleep. He's above all these things. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. As we go forward, his are all things in the heavens and the earth. All servants, including heavens and the worlds, come under his dominion. They also come under the, his power. And just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, not one of the beings in the heavens and the earth, but must come to Allah most gracious as a servant. He does take account of them and hath numbered them exactly. And every one of them will come to him singly on individually on the day of judgment this is um surah maryam um surah number 19 ayat number 93 and 295 who can intercede with him without his permission nobody can intercede in his presence except by his permission and will the mushrikeen used to think that their idols would intercede on their behalf. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining here that no intercession will work in his court except which he permits. Whereas except which he permits refers to the intercession of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May peace and blessings be upon him. Intercession of some prophets and angels, intercession of mu'mineen which will do or some other. This is in uh, Tafsir al Khazin, and so it, it is only by Allah's permission um, that anybody would be able to intercede. And then we go forward. He knows what is before them and what is behind them. So this is proof of Allah's knowledge, which is encompassing all creatures, all creations of this world. The knowledge of past, present, and future are included in this. Just like Allah said regarding the angels, we we descend not by, by the command of thy Lord, to him belongeth um, what is before us and what is behind us and what is between, and thy Lord never does forget. Surah Maryam, ayat number 64, Surah number 19. So we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything about us, everything about every creation of his. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And all knowledge is with Allah. All knowledge is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then we go forward with Aytul Kursi. They cannot gain access to anything out of his knowledge except what he pleases. His throne is more vast than the heavens and the earth and guarding of these both does not fatigue him. He is exalted and supreme. God's unique being, Allah's unique being and his total and absolute control over all things, large and small, at all times are awesome concepts to comprehend. <clears throat> 
no matter how much the lim- how much uh, our limited human mind may be able to grasp the size and variety of creatures and events of this vast universe it would not be possible for man to adequately perceive how god exercises his power and control over the entire universe so we are able to what we are able to appreciate is bound to fill us with amazement we should be amazed at allah's supreme knowledge and allah's supreme way of handling the universe and also give us uh, it should give us a reassurance of allah's presence and protection over us allah akbar the presence of allah the knowledge of allah that we have in our fitrat is described here alhamdulillah we know of allah alhamdulillah we testified at at uh, the time when we there was ahdi alast when we said yes allah you are our rabb definitely alhamdulillah this fitrat is awoken in as we recite aitul kursi alhamdulillah and the fact that he is all knowledgeable and we are his slaves alhamdulillah he is ever living he is eternal neither sleep nor slumber takes over him ever everything belongs to him we belong to him we and we are going back to him alhamdulillah the tarbiya that allah subhanahu wa taala is giving us through this aitul kursi is that we have to abide to his rules and commandments because everything is in his control everything belongs to him alhamdulillah rabbil alamin truly allah is ar rahman the most gracious the most merciful the most compassionate to give us this beautiful aitul kursi in this beautiful kalam of allah the quran majid allah akbar let's go and see another beautiful ayat in this beautiful sura sura al baqara ayat number 261 the example of those who spend their wealth in the way of allah is like a seed of grain which grows seven spikes in each spike is a hundred grains and allah multiplies this reward for whom he wills and allah is all encompassing all knowing this is a parable that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made of the multiplication of rewards for those who spend in his cause seeking his pleasure allah subhanahu wa ta'ala multiplies the good deed 10 to 700 times abu masood razila ta'ala anhu said that a man once gave away a camel with his harness on and so the harness was on the camel in in the cause of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the messenger of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said on the day of resurrection you will have 700 camels with their harnesses in another hadith imam ahmad recorded that abu huraira radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu said that the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said every good deed that the son of adam performs will be multiplied tenfolds to 700 folds to many other folds as much as allah wills allah said except the fast for it is for me and i will reward give reward for it one abandons his food and desire in my sake the fasting person has two times of happiness when he breaks his fast and when he meets his lord verily the order that comes from the mouth of whoever fasts is more pure to allah than his and then the scent of musk fasting is a shield against sinning fasting is a shield this is recorded in muslim alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala multiplies the reward for whom he wills according to the person's sincerity and deeds and allah is all encompassing and knowing means his favor is so wide that he encompasses much more than his than his creation and he has full knowledge in whoever deserves it or does not deserve it so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows how to reward someone he knows more than we ourselves know he knows of our sincerity more than we ourselves know our lord you know um we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, have deeds that will be multiplied so many times over and so to spend in allah's way uh, alhamdulillah 
and to know that Allah, to believe in the statement, the example of those who spend their wealth in the way of Allah is like the seed of grain which grows seven spikes. In each spike is a hundred grains, and Allah multiplies the reward from who, for whom He wills, and Allah is all encompassing, all knowing. Alhamdulillah, this is the month of Ramadan. We should give more and more of our. Um, wealth of our of our time of our energy of our talent to others alhamdulillah we should help the needy alhamdulillah and uh, as we know there are so many ways to uh, propagate islam which we can give to uh, institutes who are teaching islamic education alhamdulillah and noor international is one of them alhamdulillah all institutes all organizations that are working to propagate islam we can donate to them alhamdulillah we can donate to masajid alhamdulillah and we can donate for printing of pamphlets and books and uh, religious, religious educational material um, so there are so many ways we can sponsor students who uh, want to study, um, alhamdulillah, this beneficial knowledge. So many ways to gain, gain this reward. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will multiply anything that we give. He knows our sincerity more than we know ourselves. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Allah is supreme. May Allah guide us towards good. Ameen. Let's uh, go ahead and look at uh, Surah Al-Baqarah. Surah uh, number 2, ayat number 285, alhamdulillah, and 286, the last two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah. This is where, this is the third juz, the third para, and now these are the last two ayats of Surah Al-Baqarah. After this, Surah Al-Imran will begin, inshallah, ameen. The messenger has believed in what was revealed to him from his Lord, and so have the believers all of them have believed in Allah and his angels and his books and his messengers saying we have no distinction between any of these his messengers and they say we hear and we obey we seek your forgiveness our Lord and to you is the final destination at 286 Allah does not charge a soul except with that within its capacity it will have the consequence of what good it has gained and it will bear the consequence of what evil it has earned. Our Lord, do not impose blame upon us if we have forgotten or erred. Our Lord, and lay not upon us a burden like that which you have laid upon those before us, our Lord, and burden us not with that which we have no ability to bear and pardon us and forgive us and have mercy upon us. You are our protector so give us victory over the disbelieving people Amin. muslim recorded that abdullah said when the messenger of allah went to isra journey he ascended to the sidrat al-muntaha where whatever ascends from the earth ends at and whatever descends from above it ends at when that covered the lot tree which did cover the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was given three things the five daily prayers, the last ayat in Surah Al-Baqarah, which we are reading, and forgiveness for whoever did not associate anything or anyone with Allah from his Ummah, Rasul Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's Ummah. So, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, while the Messenger of Allah was with Jibreel, Islam, he heard a noise from above. Jibrail lifted his sight to the sky and said, This is a door that has opened up just now in heaven, and it was never opened before. An angel came down through the door to the Prophet and said, Receive the good news of two lights that you have been given from which no Prophet before you has been given. The opener book, Al-Fatiha, and the last ayat in Surah Al-Baqarah. You will not read a letter from them, but you will be granted its benefit. This hadith was collected by Muslim and An-Nasai. Alhamdulillah, Abu Huraira, Razila ta'ala anhu, said that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Allah has pardoned my ummah for what they say to themselves as long as they do not utter it or act on it. 
So we learned that we should not share our evil thinking with others because if we do, then we will be accountable for it. But if these whispers of the shayateen come in our mind, we are not going to be questioned about it and we are not accountable for it. This is the gift from Allah, Ar-Rahman, to this beautiful nation. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, we begin Surah al Imran in Juz 3. This is the third surah of the Quran according to its arrangement, but it's the 89th surah according to the order of revelation. It is a Madni surah. This means that it was revealed after Hijra. Some part of it was revealed in the third year of Hijra and some later. The main topics of this surah are Tawheed and prophethood and truth of the Quran. As Surah Al-Baqarah discussed the issues related to Bani Israel, this surah discusses some issues related to the Christian community and their religious positions. It also discusses subjects of Hajj, Jihad, Zakat and Riba. It ends like Surah Al-Baqarah with a dua. Alhamdulillah, this surah consists of 200 verses and is divided into 20 rukus, 20 sections. Let's look at ayat number 19 of Surah Ali Imran. Indeed, the religion in the sight of Allah is Islam, and those who were given the scripture did not differ except after knowledge had come to them out of the jealous animosity between themselves. And whoever disbelieves in the verses of Allah, then indeed Allah is swift in taking account. Indeed, the religion in the sight of Allah is Islam. Indeed, the true religion, the true deen in the sight of Allah is only Islam, which is total submission to the will of Allah. Those who were previously given the scripture were not at variance with each other, but when knowledge reached them, they differed purely out of envy amongst themselves. They ought to be aware that Allah is very prompt at reckoning with those who deny and reject his commandments and guidance. With this, we will look at one more ayat, ayat number 85 of Surah Al Imran, also in Juz 3, Alhamdulillah. And whoever desires other than Islam as religion, never will it be accepted from him, and he in the hereafter will be among the losers. Islam is the complete code of life. So as some people assume, of course, that religion deals with private affairs of life, whereas deen, because Islam is a religion and a way of life. It is, a, it is deen that covers all aspects of life, individual as well as collective. In other words, deen is all embracing term which includes religious, social, political and economic systems. It touches upon the material as well as spiritual dimensions of human existence and insists that all our thoughts and deeds should be performed with mindfulness of Allah, God consciousness. So as we know, Islam means submission to the will of Allah. This implies faith, doing right, being an example to others uh, to do right and having the power to see that the right prevails alhamdulillah and stopping wrong and being an example to others uh, uh, so they stop wrong and having the power to see that wrong and injustices are defeated islam therefore lives not for itself but for mankind Allahu Akbar. And when the term deen is used for Islam, it obviously means a system, a way of life, where Allah Almighty is worshipped and obeyed, not just in the narrow religious sense, but in a manner that includes all aspects of human life. So uh, we also know that uh, this, there's a, this book called uh, uh, The Hundred, a ranking of the most influential persons in the history. Uh, was printed in 1978 by Michael. It was written by Michael Hart, and uh, so uh, this uh, impartial critic, like Dr. Michael Hart, is compelled to confess. He confesses that my choice of Muhammad to lead the list of the world's most influential persons may surprise some readers, and may be questioned by others. But he was the only man in history who was supremely successful in both religious and secular level. So Alhamdulillah, we have a beautiful way, a life system, a beautiful way of living. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. 
We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he guides us towards this beautiful deen. He makes us stay on this deen, this lifestyle, that it encompasses all aspects of our life, inshallah ta'ala. Ameen. It is very important to read the Quran with understanding, alhamdulillah, so that all aspects of our life are in accordance to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. This is a complete code of life, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. That is why it's so important. It is a guideline. It takes away from the troubles and the tribulations and it has all the solutions for humanity, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. It is unfortunate that we have strayed so far away from this beautiful kalam, from the beautiful messages which actually are here to support us, to help us, to guide us, to keep us safe. Alhamdulillah, this is the biggest gift from Ar-Rahman, the, the Quran, Alhamdulillah. We must open these messages. We must open the Quran Majid. We must open this holy book. We must open this divine revelation and read it, understand it, contemplate on it, reflect on it. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. So our lives become easier. There is so much corruption, so much turmoil, so much wrong in this world only because we have gone away from the kalam, from this beautiful, beautiful message of Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to revise these messages, to understand these messages, to reflect on them always, Amin, so that we can be connected with our fitrat, so that we are upright individuals, so that we have a purpose of life, so that we propagate this Islam to others, inshallah ta'ala. Ar-Rahman gave us this Quran. He is the most gracious, most merciful. He's, he's Ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, we are believers. We believe in Allah. But do we believe what Allah has told us? Do we believe in all his commandments? We must ask ourselves this. We must ask ourselves how much of his commandments do we truly believe as haq, as truth. Everything in this Quran Majid is haq. And so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open up our minds and our hearts towards this kalam so that our soul gets elevated and connected with the Supreme Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah bless you, may Allah guide you, may Allah protect you, everyone. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Subhanaka lahumma wa bihamdika. Nashadu an la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah khairan kathiran.